Go ahead. All right, guys, my name is Hannah McCullough. For those of you who don't know me, I just had my two year anniversary last month. Um, I'm an elite green status presenter. And tonight I wanna to talk to you guys about sponsoring, why it's so important in our business. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard the analogy of Liza, is there a hole in your bucket? Um, so I'm gonna to talk to you guys about that, why we need to keep filling our bucket quicker than it's trickling out, okay? So I've got some notes, so hopefully I don't get off track. I'm super nervous. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these, but um, I'm excited. So we have to, uh, sponsoring is a lot of mindset. Um, we have to get in the mindset that this is gonna be a great sponsoring month. Um, we have to realize that we have a gift and this gift could change someone's life, okay? I know sometimes, like, especially if you've just joined, you're probably thinking that sounds cheesy, right? Okay, but I promise you this business has done wonders for people. Um, so anyways, sponsoring is huge in this business. You cannot hit black status without a team. You can't hit purple, orange, green, Heck, blue is even hard to hit. I mean, you can't hit it by yourself. You have to have presenters underneath you that are qualified. Um, but you guys don't want to try and sell $5,000 every month to hit blue. You don't want to have to try and sell $10,000, $13,000, and only have three qualified underneath you to hit green. You guys want a team to help you out. Um, the average lifespan of a network marketer is about three months. So this calendar that Eric, that we're following, that corporate's following with him um, is great because we sponsor one month and then we train two months. And then about that time, you're going to find out who's going to stick around, who's going to be your runners, and then you're going to need to bring in more people. And the same, it's like a constant circle is happening. Um, so sponsoring is just huge um you can sell and make some money but if you want to make big money and if you want to build a huge business you have to have a team and that's all there is to it so a lot of people freak out and they're like well i don't know how to sponsor people i don't know where to find them i don't know what to be doing um and really with the new trainings if you guys have been in lash money millionaires or gold diggers the past few days you guys know um and you if you've watched the lives you guys know that it's a system we're following and all we're doing is inviting people to look at the business and we're taking the pressure off of them and we're saying you know i know this isn't for you but do you know anyone that would be a fit or um i'd just like to share some more information with you can you give me some feedback or do you know anyone who would like to make some extra money from their phone so we've really kind of changed the way that we're prospecting that we're sponsoring people we're completely changing it up and i love the way um i love that we've partnered with eric um i actually like i had kind of watched 20 and 30 before but i really really watched it in january and i want to like listen to it not necessarily watch it and take notes this time but this month i really want to listen and get it fresh in my brain so if you guys haven't done that you need to do it asap watch 20 and 30 there's a workbook, there's a list builder, there's a calendar, there's all kinds of stuff printed off at Office Depot. It's cheap, put it in a binder, good to go, okay? So I'm not gonna talk about 20 and 30 a whole lot because it's in our back office and we have access to it, but how do you find people to sponsor or to talk to about the business? Uh, the list builder is great. You can print off your friends list on Facebook. I know Kylie posted um like a how-to in that in lash money and then i think liz shared it in gold diggers too um so print that off you can cross out presenters you can cross out men if you have men on your friends list i try and like just keep mine not like not a whole bunch of guys on there um but you can do do it however you want to and i guarantee even if you have a small friends list that there's going to be someone hiding in your friends list that you've never even talked to before. Um, so printing that off and actually seeing it in front of you, I found that is a lot more.
Did I get muted? Yeah, you were muted for a minute. I don't know what happened, but you oh, said it's a lot more and then it was just blah, blah, blah. <laughs> It's a lot. Oh, it's a lot about the friends list. Yes. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, so it's just a lot easier to see your friends list in front of you and see the names versus scrolling through Facebook and getting distracted. And it's like a black hole. You just keep scrolling. You waste so much time. So being intentional with your time, having your friends list there is so much better and you're going to get so many more messages sent. I promise. So, oh, thank you guys for commenting. I see your little messages down there. Oh. <laughs> um, so then messenger's huge. And then also in a sponsoring month like this, I completely switch gears. So I try and get my sales in at the beginning of the month. And then I completely focus on business posts, opportunity posts, um, purple card posts, what, um, you know, what this business is doing for me. And then I post, I've been posting a lot on my stories lately too. And it's fun to see exactly who sees those posts. And you can kind of see what attracts people and what doesn't by how many viewers you have on each one. I like watching that. I think it's cool. Um, so seeing who interacts on your post, seeing who's watching your stories, you can generate that, like kind of jot those names down or take screenshots and know that you need to message them and reach out about the business. And then customers is huge. Um, if you have a customer that loves the product, like die hard, unique fan, it doesn't matter what comes out, they want it. It doesn't matter if they, you know, whatever, if they love the products, ask them if they've thought about joining your team or if they've thought about starting their own business. Don't say join your team, starting your, their own business. Um, but offer them the business. Don't just talk about being a kidnapper. I love that we changed the new kids. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but offer them the business. Okay. If they're on Facebook and they're already using the products, they could take a selfie, right? They could send a few messages. They could talk to their friends. They could talk to their coworkers about the product. And you never know, like someone that you might not think would be a rock star could be a rock star. You never know when you're going to sponsor one of those. So um, don't underestimate people. And then being in groups that you're interested in. I had a hard time with that because I feel like I really don't have any hobbies. <laughs> um, but you just kind of, I'm in a few mom groups. Um, I'm in a NICU group. Um, my daughter was in the NICU for a while after she was born, not a really long time, like some kids, that would be so hard. But um, so I'm in one of those. I'm in some farmhouse groups. Um, what else? And I just kind of like get on there and interact with people. So it took me a little bit to even figure out what kind of groups I wanted to be a part of. Some of them I find really annoying, so I just take myself out, but some of them I really enjoy. So just getting on there and not necessarily prospecting right away, but because you'll probably get kicked out, but just building relationships with people. And then, um, so I kind of touched on like what a sponsoring month looks like. It's messaging a ton, okay? Just inviting people to look at the business, posting business-related posts. Um, what is this business doing for you? Doing team shout-outs. You guys, people want to see people succeeding. They're not going to want to join a company or a business and start their own business when they don't see any success. So even if you're it's not your downline. If it's your sideline, if it's your upline and they do something awesome, shout them out. It could be something like getting their first sale or having a qualified party or their promotion to yellow or pink or hitting fast start, anything that shows success. Those types of posts are going to help. I promise people are watching. Okay. Um, and then oh, my lights are flickering. I wonder Okay, that's awesome. That just went out. Um, and then the sisterhood. A lot of people, we don't want to, people to think that's all it is. I know Eric said that it looks like we get paid in hugs, and that's probably what it came across like. Um, so we don't want people thinking that that's that. Um, but I know Melina and Fancy's team, they go to like, they have Margarita Monday, the first Monday of the month. I know that because I stalk people. But <laughs> um you know, they go and they do that every month. And I think that's awesome. Um, Elizabeth, my upline, she has a meeting 
the first Saturday of every month. Everyone knows that it's that Saturday. We have coffee, donuts. We talk about the business, but we also just get to know each other and kind of do some like just team building. You know, we just, it's good to be around your team in person too, if you can. Um, so like I said, it's just a big cycle. You post, you offer the opportunity. You want your post to water the seeds after you offer it to them, okay? Share, let's switch pages, okay. Now let's get into kind of what to say when you are sponsoring. And I'm not gonna go over this a whole, whole lot because there's tons of scripts, tons of them guys. In the units section of Gold Diggers, I know for sure, and I'm pretty sure Kylie has it in Lash Money too. Um, but when you are offering someone a business or you're inviting someone to take a look, saying as minimal as possible is the best. And asking them questions so that way you're not just like word vomiting everywhere. I know we've all done it. I look back. And some of my, like, I'll click on someone to message them and I see what I said to them and I just exit off. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, that was so bad. Um, or like some of my posts that I see from, you know, my memories. It was like, we learn so much as we go. Um, it's okay not to know everything. No one's ever going to know everything. Um, but the more you learn, the better you're going to get. So anyways, less is more. And then also using some type of third party tool, like a video or um, even connecting them with your upline and doing like a three-way chat, something like that is going to be super, super helpful for different reasons. Um, you know, one of them is going to be, it's just gonna show some, like show them that someone else thinks this business is awesome. Um, it's also, what else did I put? Let me see. Sorry guys, I'm getting, I feel like I'm getting off track. Yeah, they get yeah, to I want to I want to kind of elaborate on that just a little bit. I don't want to interrupt, yeah. but just no, because good. I feel like and I know with you having Liz as an upline, um Liz and I think the same when it comes to sponsoring and we are so passionate about using the systems that you're talking about. But maybe we could elaborate a little bit more about the why behind a third party. Um what that really does and because I will say this, um a lot of times I feel if you can get your upline on the phone to close a prospect, which honestly people do not use me for, I'm like, use me. Like I will get on the phone with them because I'm confident in the close. And a lot of people are not quite there yet, but the more that you hear it and the more you see it, um, for yourself, like how somebody's going to overcome an objection and, and how they're going to go in there. And, and does that make sense? Yes. Uh, I work at Denise. You're funny, but, but I think if we can elaborate a little bit more behind like, I like to talk about the psychology behind why a third party tool works so well. Maybe you can go a little bit more into that before we move on to the next. Cause I think. Are you talking like yeah. duplication? Yeah. Like we're, I mean, obviously the duplication and it, and what it means when they're not hearing you explain the business. Um, I think those two aspects, the duplication is huge cause we want people who started in March to be able to sponsor people. Right. But we also want um, our prospect to feel like we are not the one convincing them and getting them to that conclusion. So I think that kind of, does that make sense? Right. Yeah. And duplication too. Like if you, if they, I think you said this in your live yesterday that I watched, but if they see, like, if they think, oh, well, if all I need to do is just invite someone to the business and not even have to explain, like they don't even have to know all the benefits of the business, all the ins and outs if they can send a video and they see that that works, that's going to be huge for them. And then they might not even need three months to hit pink. If they put in a few people this month, then they could potentially be pink by the end of the month. And then they could teach their girls that they put in this month to get to pink. And then it's just going to create the bowl or the ball rolling faster downhill. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I think the videos work really well. It's, they're short, sweet, and to the point. They get what we need to across without just giving them way too much information. They don't need to know how much a black status makes. They don't need to know how much the purple status is car bonus is. They don't, you know, we sometimes get so excited. We think, oh my gosh, we're getting a new teammate. Da, 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 and we're going to do this and this and this. And then we completely overwhelm them. And they're like, 
just kidding. Don't want to join your team. So is that good, Kylie, or do you want to add anything else? No, I think that's absolutely true. And I, I want to remind everybody, in case they haven't seen today, that, um, well, number one, Liz Medley just put out a freaking bomb opportunity video that I'm so excited about because it has different ethnicities represented, yes. which I love. Um, and it's just a very good video. It's seven minutes long. You can find it in Opportunity Knocks. But, um, and I also believe that the Opportunity Knocks, um, or sorry, the Why Biz Info dot com website has been updated now to reflect the new pricing on the kit um yes it's an amazing video and then also corporate has now put out i want to say eight different opportunity videos those are found in the pop so um they're just short like one two minute long videos that each one kind of touches on each each different thing so if you're curious about where you can find these third-party tools just ask around, look around. You're going to find them in our team pages. You're going to find them on the Opportunity Knox website. And then we have wearegolddiggers.com, which is G-O-A-L, which Liz has created, which is amazing. And then we have whybizbizinfo.com that has another opportunity video you guys can find. So there's so many tools for us to use now, which we went forever with hardly having any. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, I think too, kind of trying to, if you know the person you're sponsoring or you're trying to sponsor, kind of trying to feel them out and see what they might like best or what they might connect with best. Like if they would connect more to the corporate videos or if they would like the presentation that Liz put together or if they would like the video, you know, like the newest video on Opportunity Knox. Um, and guys, that whole page, I don't know if, I feel like it's not used enough. There are so many like different why videos, different business videos. So if you guys search Opportunity Knocks on Facebook, you guys can scroll through and there's so many videos on there that you can use. Um, they might not be brand new. They might be a year or a year and a half old, but they're still valuable and they're still helpful. Um, so do you think we need to go over wording or I had it wrote down, but yeah, actually, we did a Zoom a few weeks ago, um, and I asked, I asked for feedback regarding sponsoring, and I think people would really like to hear what you say. I think that's the most common thing is, like, what do I say when I reach out? Like, what do I say to – I mean, although we have a lot of scripts, sometimes I, I like to just kind of go over a few. I'm the type of person that I feel um, – I, I say this all the time, like, I can draw a picture if I see it first. You know what I mean? Like I can't really come up with it out of my head, but I feel like if I can hear the way somebody's saying something, I'll quickly make it my own, but that helps me get a better idea. So yeah, if you want to go over some of that, I think it would be okay. super helpful. So um, some of them that I have, and these are just, these are strictly wrote down guys, because if I tried doing this off the top of my head in front of all you guys, I would just, it would be terrible. So I'm just going to read this so I don't mess it up. Um, this one says, this may or may not be for you. If not, no big deal. So we're automatically taking the pressure off of them. They don't feel obligated. Um, but I'd love to have your feedback either way. Would you be willing to take a look? Or you can say, hey, um, you know, I know we've chatted about this before, but I've got this new video or I've got this new tool, however you want to say it. Um, I'd love to share it with you just to get some feedback on it. Um, Either way, I'd love, you know, I'd love your feedback, whether it's positive or negative. I've sent people videos before asking that, and they came back saying it was awful. <laughs> so it's good to know, like, where they stand. Um, and that's one thing we need to talk about, too, guys. It's not going to be easy. Sponsoring can be, like, you will get in your head this month. You're not going to get a yes every time. You're going to get ignored a lot, and you're going to get told no a lot. Um, that's, that's all there is to it. Some people are, like, anti network marketing. They think it's the worst thing in the world. Um, and if they, if you prospect them, they're either going to ignore you or say no, or you could get like bashed. I don't know, you know, but don't let it discourage you. You guys, we have to get in the mindset this month and always really that, yeah, every no gets you closer to a yes. Exactly. Um, but we have to get in the mindset that this is truly a gift. And if someone doesn't want it is completely okay. It's their loss not yours okay you don't need that negative nancy on your team really i mean that's the way i started looking at it is we want people that want this we want people that you don't have to convince to work we want people that you don't have to convince that this is an opportunity of a lifetime okay 
So um, that is one that I like a lot is just inviting, taking the pressure off and, you know, change it up a little bit. Make sure you use their name so you personalize it. Do not forward messages. Messenger is notifying people when they are forwarded. Um, but I think that's huge. And there's a bunch of different, like I said, there's a bunch of different ones in Gold Diggers and Lash Money that you guys can look at word for word. Just switch it up a little bit, okay? Um, and then you want to ask them if, if they say yes, then ask them, hey, when's a good time or when will you be able to watch? And then they're going to tell you like, oh, I can watch tomorrow night at six or they might not be that specific, but then say, okay, I'll check back in with you tomorrow around 730. Would that be okay? And they're going to say, yeah, sounds great. Put a reminder in your phone, put a reminder somewhere and don't drop the ball. You never know what they could think about that video. Um, and even if it's not for them, they could know someone that could be perfect for this. And if you drop the ball on them, they're going to think, well, I don't matter or, you know, whatever. You need to follow up when you say you're going to follow up. And then you want to ask them what they like best. Do not ask them what they thought because then they're going to think of the more negative thing or maybe something that they didn't like versus what they liked best. Um, so when they, when you ask what they like best, you're more likely to get the, you know, you're going to get the positive and then you're going to elaborate on that. Like, oh my gosh, that's my favorite part too. Or yeah, that's why I joined blah, blah, blah. You know, <laughs> you're just going to act like a normal human. Don't overthink it. Um, and then most likely you're going to get some type of objection once you try and close. And where did I put that book? Okay. So you're going to get some type of objection. It doesn't matter. Someone is very rarely, are you going to message someone? This whole conversation is going to go perfect and they're going to sign up. It's going to take a few times. It's going to take a few, um, can't think of the word that I'm looking for, but it's going to take a few times for you to ex expose them to this. And then, you know, they're not going to just join right away. Uh, they're going to give you some objections, whether it's, I don't have the money, I don't have the time, um, I'm not very, like, popular or well-known, um, I'm not pretty. I've heard that. I'm not pretty enough to do, like, to sell makeup um, with some other ones. Anyways, there's a ton. You can Google overcoming objections in network marketing. There's going to be a ton that pop up on there. You can um, look in unit section guys they have made these units yeah <laughs> it's crazy how many like i mean pr pretty much every single one of us has gave an objection at some point okay very rarely like you said just someone just sign up um but one of the books that i really really love for overcoming objections is um rock your network marketing business by sarah robbins and this literally has, I'm so busy, I don't have enough time to do this. And it tells you exactly what to say. I understand how you feel. I felt the same way when I got started. And it tells what she did. Um, and we found most people work this business in very part-time hours. I just started with about 10 to 15 hours per week. And you can tell them, you know, this works in the nooks and crannies of your life. That's why you're your own boss. Um, I don't have enough money. I'm not a salesperson. I don't know anybody. I don't want to bug my friends or family. That's huge. Um, so anyways, this book, I'm not going to like read it because it's here and I, you know, but anyways, I love this for that. You can also, if you don't want to buy the book, you can always just look overcoming objections up online and then you'll have the answer it's not hard we always overthink sponsoring we just overthink it if we just do what we're supposed to do we would sponsor a whole lot more um and then once you overcome their objections just ask them are you ready to get started like are you ready for the link are you ready to get going because if you say like if you don't take that initiative to just say like let's do it. Then they're going to come up with a reason. They're going to pull back and they're going to come up with another objection. So you need to just, I don't know, be kind of direct and say, let's go. Like no more waiting, no more excuses. Let's do this. I'm going to help you. 
Um, another thing that you can do after you invite them to the business, you can send them a video. Then this is Eric Worre's, um training. It's in 20 and 30. But you can say, you know, what did you like best? Then you can ask them on a scale from one to 10, one being not interested, 10 being like, I'm ready to sign up right now. Where are you at? He says if they're a, what is it? Can't remember the number. It's like crazy low. If, if they're seven above, they're going to join. If they're like three or something, I think they're probably going to join. And if they're lower, is that what he says? That's the numbers, right? right i should have looked that up basically that any up. anything that's not a zero means there's a chance it's like the dumb and dumber right thing, you know what I mean? right um and i think too that if um okay i'm gonna have to meet myself i literally just lost my train of thought yeah <laughs> um so then he says you know on a scale from one to ten where are you at where are you at yeah oh i'm, oh, I'm echoing uh, myself I, Oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, that I want to challenge you guys too, that when somebody comes at you with an objection and they will, um, like Hannah said, they very rarely will just like be like, yeah, sure. Where do I sign up? Um, so let's say they tell you it's because they don't have the time. Um, this is a way that you can kind of overcome that too, is you might say, um, oh my gosh, I totally get that. Like you want to relate to them, right? Like the feel, thought, found. But then what if you said, okay, let's pretend for, yeah, let's pretend for a minute. Like the timing isn't, or that, that you had all the time in the world. Um, dream a little bit with me. What, what would this business mean to you then? Or what, could, what do you think you could do if that weren't an issue and help walk them through seeing themselves in this position? Because if it's truly just about that, we can all find a way to prioritize our time, prioritize our money, prioritize whatever it is that we need to do. More than likely, it's not just about that. Um, most of the time when people give you an objection, it's actually something deeper than that. So I want to challenge you guys to basically call their bluff, uh, but be polite about it and be um, sympathetic about it because most people don't love that they don't have the time, right? They don't love that they don't have the money. Who likes being broke? But if you can kind of call their bluff, walk them through what it might look like if that weren't the issue, you might be able to get them deeper into understanding why they need this business as much as we know that they do. Sorry, totally. No, it's good. Um, and then after, so after you do the scale of one to 10, and then he says, if you could work this very part time, how much would you need to make per month to make this worth your time? They're going to come back and he even, I think this was at leadership summit in Houston when I went like in February, I can't remember. I feel like I've watched so many of his trainings lately that I can't even keep them straight, but he was like a complete network marketing. Like they don't want to join at all. And he says, I know, I know hypothetically speaking, if you were to do this very part time, how much would you need to make a month? People always could use more money. I don't care if you are filthy rich and you have more money than you need, you can always use a little extra money. No one's been turned out extra money, right? So um, they come back with their answer. And then he says, how many hours a week would you be willing to work to get that money? Um, and then you say, if I could show you a way to make this amount of money and working this amount of time a week, would you be willing to, or is that, Yes. So if I could show you how to develop an income of blank, working blank over the course of blank, would you be ready to get started? So you're literally just taking the answers that they just told you. You need to come up with a game plan for them. Don't just say you can do it. And, you know, it's obviously going to take their effort and they're going to have to work for it too. But you need to come up with some kind of system um, for them. And then, so then say, are you ready to get started? Or let's get you going. So let's say we all sponsor a 20 and 30 this month, okay? And now you're thinking, maybe you're brand new and you're like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I just started this business and I'm in over my head and I brought this new team member on and I don't even know what to tell them to do, okay? Well, corporate, 
work with our awesome black status one black status leaders and ones and twos and made this pretty little chart that is pathway to pink okay so corporate put this together for us i'm a hands-on i like having it in my hands so i had it printed and laminated <laughs> i'm crazy um but guys this has everything you need this is like the unique bible right here i swear so it you know it tells you pre-launch launch you get to yellow status then you want to get fast start and where do you get that at it's in the presenters only page under files okay so i don't care if you're pink i don't care if you're black i think we should every single one of us have this printed out to where we can reference it all the time okay because this is going to help everyone okay this is going to help you know as a leader what you need to be telling your teams to do and then it's going to help them and hold them accountable to where you know maybe they don't have to come to you with every single question or maybe they do one thing and then they don't know what to do next they can look at this sheet and know what they need to do okay so it gives you tasks of every single thing and then it's got definitions of hot market warm market fast start fast start wholesale sales first level host i mean it's got everything you guys it's got um check marks for your prs it has find your first six customers find six hostesses find six teammates it has everything so i say you guys make it at least save it on your phone i say print it out and keep it with you <laughs> because you never know when someone like we all should want to see our team succeed i was catching myself up. i didn't even look at my numbers like the last i don't know how long because i didn't care like i want to see my team hit promotions i want to see my girls get to pink i want to see them reach blue i want to see yellow status presenters i want to see people hit fast start i don't really care about me i think it's fun to watch others and i like helping them so having this is freaking awesome i just love it and it's so you guys are like like pretty things this is, they nailed this <laughs> and like all the content on it is just great um and then you can do the um warm market invite and hot market uh, what's it can't think of hot market approach i think and just have them i did this i do this with all my girls when they join is to have them message their hot market which hot market is your closest friends and family and it's going to tell you in the definition section um and you're going to message them tell them to message them and ask them eric Corey says ask them to spend 100 bucks then they don't have to buy again and if they don't love it they can return it within 14 days make sure they know about our love it guarantee um yeah so i don't how are we doing on time i feel like i've been on here a while but maybe i haven't you're fine it's 9 35 okay so okay cool i'm almost finished so we're wrapping up that's good um but yeah so i think doing that and having them grow their customer customer base that way and making sure they do a launch party and they get hostesses from that for continue you know like continuing to do the parties and growing their network is going to be huge um so i say hot market is great for sales to start out um and he says too you're going to be able to know who has been like a giver and who has been more of like a receiver by who has higher sales and he said that's fine some people are just going to have to work for it a little bit harder he used him as an example he had to work for the sales a little harder um because he was more of a taker <laughs> he was more of a receiver so i think just asking the family and friends for support and just asking them to try it once and tell them about the love it guarantee and go from there so and using this pathway to pink chart but that's about it does anyone have any questions or anything comments concerns Sometimes, anyone? sometimes people are so shy to speak up. It seems like, um, does anyone want to ask anything to Hannah before we lose her? She was so good. Thank you. That was nerve wracking. Oh. Nailed it. 
No, it was so good. Everything is good. A lot of good Thank you. nuggets for sure. Um, you know what I love the most is how you, honestly, how you inoculated everyone about how difficult it can be. Because I, I see this so yeah. often. And then you also mentioned the lifespan of the average network marketer. And I think a lot of that is because in that first three months, you experienced so much rejection um, from people sometimes that you thought would be your biggest supporters. Like I found in my business, I'm almost five years in, uh, I still have family members that have never bought a single thing from me. And I'm okay with that because I know my family and friends want to have built me to the business that I am. It was by getting outside of what's comfortable to me. Um, so I think what we need to remember is April is the month for you guys to be so ridiculously uncomfortable so that you can live a life that is way more comfortable than most people are used to living. Um, I think that's vital that when we go into this, we understand that the good things happen outside of what's comfortable to us. The best things happen, you know, outside of that. Like what you need to be prepared for is, is a lot of rejection because the more times you hear no, you guys have heard this so many times before, the more times you hear no, you're going to get more yeses. And I will tell you this from personal experience. And sometimes I feel I'm a little too transparent, but I honestly had not actively sponsored like prospected people in such a long time before the new year um, that I had just kind of stopped believing that I was good at it. You know, I, I almost had this false sense before ever hitting black status that I thought, Oh, when she hit black status, sponsoring so easy. Like people are just going to flock to your door because they hear it, like your reputation precedes you or something. And that wasn't the case for me. In fact, it felt harder for me to sponsor because I felt like I was less relatable for people. Um, I feel like at an entry level, a mid level, you, people can relate to you more. You don't seem like one of the few people that have made it or something like that, you know? So to make a long story short at the beginning, um, yes, it's being recorded. Amber, um, at the beginning of the year, I decided that, you know, of course, Eric Worry training, it's encouraging us all to like run with momentum again and really get back to that. And, um, thank you, Denise, you're sweet. Uh, but so in January, I started actively prospecting people again. And you guys, it was like ripping a bandaid off. I remember printing off my friends list and being like, oh my gosh, this still makes me uncomfortable. And I will tell you, because of those seeds that I planted that month, and I didn't even do like a 20 and 30. I, I prospected in January, but I did not spend all of my time on it. Like you really should in a true, you know, run. And I did bring on new presenters and I had them kind of like trickling, um, you know, signing up like the next month even. But last month, like my front level, my first level, um, you know, the bonuses we get, those first level bonuses. Mine is never all that big. Um, it's just not like, especially when I compare myself to, to people at my, at my level that are really bringing in a lot of people. Um, mine has never been that big in comparison to the rest of, you know, what I'm looking at. And last month was March was my biggest one I've ever had. And it was because I had fresh blood on my team. I had new people that were actually motivated because I actively prospected again. And what that showed me is we have so much more control over our business than we give ourselves credit for. I think people all the time say, well, just, you know, people aren't coming to me and, and I don't have this or I don't have that. You guys take control of your business, put the ball in your court and just say, I'm sick of that. I'm sick of saying that I'm not where I want to be. I'm sick of saying that she's black status and I'll never be, or she's green status and I'll never be. You guys, it is completely up to you. I've been hearing this since the beginning of network marketing. If it's to be, it's up to me. You guys, you're in so much control of what is going to happen for you in 2019 and 2020, but you have to stop telling yourself that it's impossible and you have to stop worrying about what people are going to think of you. Like none of that matters. Worry about what you think of you. Worry about what your husband thinks of you when he sees you wasting so much time on social media, but not getting anything accomplished. Start yeah. spending your time somewhere that's going to make you money and help other people make money. That's, that's, that's the secret to this business. I don't know. That's what Eric said at the, I think it was, maybe it was the leadership summit or it might've even just been the empower you. He took up a lot of the time and it was awesome. Um, and he was talking about like unsupportive spouses or boyfriends mm -hmm. or significant anyone. And 
any, like even just your family, your kids, if they're unsupportive, it's because they're tired of seeing you crawl. Like they are tired of seeing your nose in your phone and no results. And that kind of struck a chord with me. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, because <laughs> like I want to stay home and I have got to like get my booty into gear if I want to keep staying home. And I yeah. keep saying, well, I'll stay, you know, I'll stay home until Rosalie starts school. Well, Rosalie's only two. That gives me like three years. Like I should be freaking BS1 by then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like there's no excuse. I'm home. I can work my business. Like it's time to get to it, Hannah. Like I kick Stop myself. I should around, already be black Hannah. status. <laughs> messing around. I'm telling you, yeah. it blows my mind. And you know, there is still, we're just barely scratching the surface. The fact that this month is, I mean, these new presenter kits and, and how we're, we're finally really truly running on the timeline that Eric Worre has taught about, about, you know, sponsoring about four, four times a year. And then the rest of the time you're supporting your team to get to their promotions. It's brilliant when you think about it, because it doesn't over exhaust you. How often have you guys seen somebody maybe in your upline or something, and they just seem like they burn out nonstop. They just, you know, grindstone, not like constantly. When I see people like that, honestly, it is not attractive to me. Like I run the other direction because I did not start this business so I could be a slave to this. Like I didn't. I want to be able to like hang out in the pool with my kids. I want to be able to watch a movie with them and not be staring at my phone. Like I want breaks from this business, but if you want the breaks, you have to work really hard certain times a year. So if you're willing to do this some of the time, you can enjoy your life the rest of the time. And we want that. Like nobody in this, nobody in their right mind wants to work 80 hours a week every week. Heck no. And honestly, social media is so addicting anyway. I guarantee most of you guys, including myself, when you feel like you've worked a lot, if you actually looked at the amount of time that you're being productive, it is such a small number. Um, you know, Chad has, Chad has pointed that out to me so many times before too. He's like, get out of some of those chat groups, man. Like you're wasting your time. And I'm like, I'm building relationships, you know, but a lot of times it is a waste of time. So make sure that you're spending the majority of your time on these income producing activities. Eric Worre says this too, the highest paid skill in network marketing is spent inviting prospects to take a look at your business. So if that is all you do all day, every day for the rest of the month, you're gonna make more money. Like I promise you that, you're gonna make more money. So if let's say you have one hour a day because you work full time, you've got kids, whatever. If you take that hour and all you do is invite people to take a look at your business and then you evaluate what you've just done and then you go do it again, why are you staring at me? Oh, Chad's watching me do my thing as he's watching. <laughs> um, now I'm nervous. Uh, but anyway, yes, GoPro is going to be so good. But you know what I mean? If that's all you do, if you take one hour a day and all you do in that hour is get your business opportunity in front of as many people as possible. Do you guys know what that will do for your business? It's so often you're not doing it. I know it because so often I haven't done it. And I saw what it did to my business. My business grew stagnant because I wasn't doing that. And as soon as I started doing it again, it was starting to grow again. So that's a secret. Oh my gosh, Hannah, you're amazing. And I ramble. So, mm. well, thank you guys. <laughs> this was so fun. Thank you so much for volunteering. Um, so next week, um, just quick reminder. Next week, Megan divorce is doing our zoom same time as you guys know we just started our april challenge of the of the month and i'm super excited about it so make sure that you're on all the zooms um <laughs> yeah totally thank you so much hannah i will post the recording afterwards make sure you encourage your teams to check this out because everybody needs to know how to grow so thank you so much hannah everyone have a great night Bye, guys.